Let me ask you this. Is there anything better than a good success story? They used to say rags to riches, but now it's more like average to exceptional. When a normal guy like you and me pulls it off, and it almost makes you believe I could do that too. Well, that's what developer Eric Barone did when he built a game that started as a portfolio project and turned it into $34 million. This game is called Stardew Valley. Now, even if you already know this story or you don't care about games, there's a few things Eric did that we're gonna look at which led to his success. And these are things we can all learn from whether you're looking to start a business or not. Just so you can have a specific takeaway from this video that could make your life better, we're gonna break it into three specific things he did. Now, let's start with Eric, who seems like a pretty normal guy. In fact, when he started, he wasn't a game developer at all. Now, if you compare this to the guy who created Minecraft, who's a genius in Mensa, started coding games when he was eight, and had five years of professional game development experience before going all in on Minecraft, well, our boy Eric, on the other hand, just wanted a normal developer job, but was having a hard time finding one. So, like anyone who learns the code, he simply started building a personal project for his resume, and that project was a game. Now, right when he started building, Eric made the first critical move that innovators have been doing since the beginning of time. He started out by emulating or copying an existing game. It's pretty easy to have an ego and just want to start completely from scratch. But the reality is a lot of inventions, everything from Renaissance paintings to social networks, while well, they start out by copying something else. If you don't like the word copying, you can also say inspired by. And when you hear the word movement, well, that's just a bunch of people copying and building off of each other's ideas. So you start by emulating and then you can add a little twist to make it your own. And this is really what happens when we learn too. Who do we learn from? The people whose position we want to be in. So let's say they write a book. It's like they're photocopying the way they understand things in their head. And then you are absorbing that. I got a little bit weird, but let's keep going. In Eric's case, he loved the game Harvest Moon growing up, which is basically a farming simulator. But he didn't like where the series started going, so he decided to build his own version of the game. He went with the C-sharp language, which is common to use in the game development world. But he started to build from scratch instead of using a tool like Game Maker Studio or Unity. What that means is building the engine, graphics, sound effects, all from scratch. When he started, yeah, he knew how to code, but he did not know how to do any of this other stuff. And particularly daunting was the pixel art. And of course, there were also going to be limitations to his coding ability that he would have to overcome. So this is the second critical thing he did. If he didn't have a growth mindset, that is, knowing he would be able to learn these things as he went, well, he never would have started. Now, let's use creating that pixel art as an example. He ended up having to do and redo models until they were perfect. But instead of being frustrated, he just looked at every model as a step in his learning experience. And if you look at yourself over a period of weeks or months, it can be crazy how much you can improve. So Eric started to learn and weeks started to go by. In fact, when he started, he had no idea exactly how long it was going to take. It also would have been pretty hard, if not impossible, to stay sane unless he wasn't really working alone. Now, what I mean is he was blogging everything he was doing on a forum and sharing it with the world. He released an early version of the game to the internet and got very positive feedback on it. Now, by doing this, he wasn't just working out of his head. He knew there was a demand for the game as the followers of the blog grew. So building a community as early as possible was a critical factor for both his sanity and him being confident that the game was going to do well. In fact, he kind of had a group of people cheering him on. Once it reached a critical mass, he stopped seeing it as a portfolio project and he was willing to commit everything to get it done. And he started to become so into it that he would work at times for 12 hours a day. Now, people say it's not motivation, but discipline that's the key to getting stuff done. But if you don't really, really love something, think it's more fun than doing other stuff, you're not going to be able to work 12 hours a day. That's just way more willpower than anyone has. And if I had to guess, the love for this project emerged out of his past nostalgia for the Harvest Moon games, as well as all the time he was investing until it reached a critical mass where he was really passionate about it. Now, I promise I'm going somewhere with this. So far, we've got community, we've got passion or love for the project. 
these two things i'm sure kept him going through the hardest of times and there was one more thing that did that too eric's also quoted as saying that the variety of different things to do making the music the art coding well that kind of kept him interested because when he got bored of one he could just switch to another what he did with these three things whether consciously or not is set up a system for success that actually sounds kind of cringe but let me put it this way he created an environment where even if one of the things was failing him let's say towards the end he started to hate the project because he'd been working on it for so long which is true but at that point in time the community was so strong well there's no way he could give up on it then at other times i'm sure the variety was failing him maybe he had to just code a ton of logic all at once well maybe thinking about his nostalgic love for the old games that made him power through that phase and of course before he'd built up community support while well, he was purely relying on the other two so whatever you want to call it a system for success an environment or ecosystem of motivation it doesn't really matter the important part is if you set up a system that can help you with both motivation and the quality of what you're doing then after four years of working completely alone making a ton of mistakes learning pixel art and music from scratch and having people close to him test the game finally the game launched and needless to say it was a huge 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 hit as of 2020 stardew valley has sold 10 million copies which according to google has made eric's net worth 34 million keep in mind that's after all the platform fees and taxes 34 million so let's bring it all home eric started out by cloning or being inspired by a game that he greatly admired and knew was successful already to even get started on this project he had to have a growth mindset being confident enough that he could learn or figure anything out that came up as an obstacle and finally to actually do the work for four years straight at times 12 hours a day he couldn't just rely on his own willpower he set up systems and his personal system relied on him being passionate having a community and having variety in his work the craziest part is eric is still updating the game or at least he was until very recently and he's already working on his next game now whether you're trying to build your own project you're learning a new skill or really just going through life these are principles that we can apply starting today if we wanted to. Let me use myself as an example. When I was starting to code, I looked on YouTube for people giving advice. Then after I had a job, I did the same, but I put my own spin on it. Tried to make the advice a little bit more succinct, a little bit more better, more better. <laughs> and then finally, I created a course of my own, taking the things I liked from other courses and making what I thought were improvements on that model. Of course, none of this would have been possible without a growth mindset. I was terrible at programming for a long time. Then I was terrible at video editing. Uh, I'm still not great at growing a YouTube channel, but I'm having fun doing it. And honestly, if you can get good at self-teaching, it's not only powerful, but it's a lot more fun than school. I'll just put it that way. Personally, right now I'm building projects with the microcontroller board. I'm reading a book on self-driving and well, after creating this video, I kind of want to start a game now too. <laughs> my Harvest Moon would probably be Mega Man Battle Network. That game was basically my childhood and it was so incredible and it doesn't exist anymore. So I've also been messing around with this thing. It's something fun to play around with, but maybe you can't bring it to an office. I don't know. Anyway, my point is you can even make the dumbest little thing something that you learn over time um and get better at and then it maybe it becomes something cool in the future that you can do so for this video i do have a few thank yous first to eric of course if you ever watch this you're a super inspiring man you have an awesome game and uh, i can't wait to see what you come out with in the future also if you want a more detailed version about this story or any uh development stories for different games i really recommend you check out the channel that guy glenn on youtube i got a lot of clips for this video from him and on his channel, he's made videos on Stardew Valley, Subnautica, a bunch of other indie games. So if you're at all interested in game development or how it works, I highly recommend you check out his channel. He also deserves way more subscribers. And now the obligatory, please like the video. It's just one click for you. And to tempt you to subscribe, here's a little preview of my next upcoming video.
Uh, actually, I haven't made it yet, but what we're going to talk about is digital nomads and how they're coming back in a big way. I found some really uh, interesting stories about that and um, some data. I know you guys like data. I will see you guys there. Peace.